Okay, now that we have our service catalog structure set up, um, at least a basic catalog structure set up, we're going to talk about how do we um, manage who can request which items from the catalog. Um, meaning you may have a set of users who need to request all things in the catalog, and you may have a set of users who only need to request some of the things in the catalog, um, and they shouldn't see everything in the catalog. Um, so for that, uh, in our service management automation platform, we leverage what we classify as entitlement groups and entitlement rules. Um, now these uh, groups and rules can be created a number of different ways, but we're gonna start to talk through that um, and start to create some of those things. If you're following along uh, for the sake of the workshop, um, you're gonna want to substitute some of the values in here for um, your actual uh, service catalog, either categories or um, your service uh, offerings themselves. We're gonna take a look at it from an offering perspective um, as we uh, kind of move through this example. And you can definitely replicate that from a workshop perspective if you're following along for the purpose of the workshop. Okay, so entitlements two uh, different things. So let's go take a look at our uh, service catalog quickly, um, just to review the, the structure that we have. In this case, we have two categories, GitOps and sample category. If we drill into sample category, we have a sample business service. And under sample business service, we have one offering called sample offering, okay? Um, and that is an IT service offering. Uh, similarly, if we drill down the GitOps perspective, we have GitOps SaaS, which is in the planning, uh, phase of the service definition, and there's no offerings underneath that. So um, entitlement groups can be set um, in a number of different ways. Um, at Greenlight, we recommend the best practice of either applying them at an individual offering perspective, but most realistically, it's going to be at the category perspective. So both categories and offerings can have entitlement rules applied to them. Um, but for the sake of, of keeping it simple from a administrative perspective, uh, offerings or categories applying them at one of those two layers seems to be uh, what most organizations are able to manage the best, if you will. Okay, so for the uh, sake of our example here, we're gonna leverage uh, some groups and we're gonna leverage some entitlement rules. Now, both of those particular um, modules, if you will, are underneath the administration section of the mega menu and underneath people um, because they both have to deal with people effectively. So the first thing we're going to do is go create some entitlement groups. Okay, so we go to the groups tab. Um, so underneath people and groups, we're underneath the groups tab. We have, uh, you know, these um, out of the box groups that are provided. But we're going to create a new group. Um, and we're going to create this new group, um, you know, for the sake of visibility and administration purposes, we're going to prefix it with entitlement. Um, and this is uh, sample requests um, and a user principal name. This is a unique identifier for the um, group in and of itself. Um, so we're going to call it uh, ENT sample requests. Um, and the group type, organization or functional. In this case, it's a more of a functional group because we're gonna have people from theoretically multiple organizations in the group. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. That's the required attributes um, from an owner perspective. It's always best to assign an owner from a best practice perspective, even though it's not required. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign myself to that. Um, now, I'm gonna go ahead and save and edit that group so we can take a look at it. Okay, so here's our group. You can see there's lots of additional attributes that can be populated as far as a group goes. We can see that we have um, group members here. Uh, to add additional members, it's relatively straightforward. You click the uh, add drop down, and you can then start to um, go through different things. In this case, I'm gonna add uh, Chris Monroe to my group as well. So you can see both Tori and Chris are in this entitlement group and, um, you know, when we get to setting up the entitlement rules, we will uh, associate this group to the entitlement rule, um, thereby um, allowing both Chris and Tori to see the sample offerings. So since we added a user, we're gonna go ahead and click save. 
of course, if you wanted to add more people, if you wanted to populate group members here by way of an automated integration, say you have LDAP group set up over in your Active Directory, you could port those same groups over here for entitlement purposes. Um, you know, there's a myriad of different ways to populate these um, from a programmatic methods to uh, manual methods. Um, all of them are, are possible. 